Hi, I am Dee Dee Jones, and this is Hope Connection. And I'm Stan Copeland, the pastor of Lover's Lane United Methodist Church, and Dee Dee and I serve together. And we're excited about today having Carla back for a second time. And I wanted to talk about, um, you know, you've had an amazing professional career. You've been 31 years with one of the great companies in the United States, Mm AT&T, and you've just uh, risen through the ranks uh, in different kinds of jobs. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Um, I love AT&T. They've been so good to me. I started uh, in 1991. I would call people. I only got the job because I actually had a cell phone in a bag. And the the lady that interviewed me, Carol, she said, "Um, have you ever heard of these things called cellular (laughs) phones? I'm like, I have one. She's like, you're hired. So my job was to call people and sell them call waiting and call forwarding. How's your new phone service? We have this new thing. So, I mean, I started, you know, and I'm definitely uh, in a different role now, but I've had... You know, 31 yeah. years, and I hope many more. I absolutely love my job, and I love at and and um, they have been really good to me. Yeah. And, and you said when you went to work there that you were very straightforward about mm-hmm. who you were. And, yes. And, uh, and, and tell us a little bit about that. I was, I you know, uh, after the rejection from my family and uh, so forth, I just decided, you know, in my stubborn that I was going to live authentically and be open. And if people didn't like it, then I would just deal with that. What more loss could you go through besides right. your father? So um, <clears throat> that's what I did. And I wasn't aggressive about it, but I was open and honest. Mm-hmm. And I feel, for, for me, I'm not saying everyone has had this uh, experience, but for me, it was um, it was a nice dynamic in my life where I had people that I could be open and honest and um, I was accepted and it, I, I never felt in any way that it, it was a hindrance. I think people appreciated my honesty mm-hmm. and my openness and I give them a different perspective maybe of what they had known uh, gay people to be. I don't fit the mold of mm-hmm. you know what you typically think of. Um, so I think it was a good experience mm-hmm. for me. It has been. And they've come along. Even a, they're even more diverse and inclusive now. So did you find it strange, though, Carla, that it's like I'm accepted in this corporation, but I'm not accepted in church? Yeah. Yes. yes. What, was it, what was that like for it you? Was, I mean, it's growing so up. Hard. Yeah. It's so hard because you're, you've t- you're taught you have a relationship with this this you know with God who's your father and then you have a father who rejects you and you won't speak to you and then you have the church the people that you have learned everything from and and all that you that they've taught you about God which is all has been good sure but mm-hmm. then they can't love you and accept you um so it was a strange dynamic to find acceptance and more 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 acceptance and love from unchurched people than from the church. It It's definitely not how it should be. You know, it, it has surprised me a lot that, you know, when it comes to the ethics of inclusion and treating, you know, people equally, uh, that that should be the heart and soul of Christian ethics, that you can look at corporations um, uh, today, not that corporations are perfect and don't do unethical things, but related to this particular topic, corporations uh, seem to have exceeded uh, the church ethic. I agree. And and uh, have said, you know, we want to look like the world. We want our people uh, to reflect uh, a world of different religions, mm-hmm. a world of different mm-hmm. uh, sexual orientations, a, mm-hmm. you know, a world, because that's who we are, and that's yes. who our customers are. And, and uh, you, you know, the church, in my opinion, if we're not doing that, then we're missing the whole point of, you know, exactly. how Jesus built his 12 disciples, uh, such a diverse group of people, how, uh, you know, the church spread, you know, from a very Jewish world into a Gentile world, you know, uh, where women were were seen as a, a very important aspect of that growth and development of the early church in a day when that wasn't uh, heard of. Uh, you know, Samaritans who were despised and they were so much 
uh, racial tension really related to that and you know Jesus just slapped that down right and left I, I mean if we don't get that then I think we have to uh, we have to pray a little bit more about you know being more inclusive and more uh, accepting and more like Jesus in essence yes, and more deliberate about it it, there it's you go. not accidental. There you go. Like yeah. you know, it's on purpose. The, uh, mm -hmm. I know for AT and T, they're very deliberate about mm -hmm. it, and they're very deliberate about it about protecting um, not only the LGBTQ, but you know, we have org we have uh, employee resource groups for almost any um, ethnic background, religious, faith, whatever. I mean, they they're very deliberate about wanting people to feel and know that they are safe and accepted and they know that we're better as a company the more diverse that we are and the more we accept and connect with each other mm -hmm. it just makes us better and stronger so um yeah it was a, it's a strange dynamic to not have well i have it now but to, mm -hmm. to not mm -hmm. feel that from the church yeah. um or from your you know ch church friends and mm -hmm. family so. well and i think that's been the hard battle watching our churches as a whole mm -hmm. fight for something that corporations have already figured out and right. gotten mm -hmm. right How have they got and you're like right. wait we're supposed to be leading <laughs> the way on ethics right and on on what it means to live into this life of unconditional mm -hmm. love and care exactly and wow mm -hmm. you know and so um this is a great reminder for us of what we have to keep mm -hmm. working on, which is why I'm glad we're at Lover's Lane. Exactly. Because we don't, we, we've got that mm -hmm. here and that yes. matters here yes. for us. And I think we are intentional about it because you speak about it on Sundays to make sure everyone knows you're, you are welcome. You are loved. You are safe here. Um, you know, and then we follow through. It's authentic. Um, I heard Randy's interview talking about when he came in and Veronica opened the door mm -hmm. oh, for yeah. him. And oh, yeah. like as soon as you hit the door, I mean, you feel it's authentic. You're going to see that because it is. And I knew and I've had that conversation mm -hmm. before where if, if, if someone comes in and they don't feel that we're authentic and we don't really mean what we say, they will not come back. That's right. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they've been fooled before, not doing it again. Yeah. Yeah. 